Good morning and welcome to the show. The topic this morning is the legislative agenda of the State Senate of Tennessee. And we're fortunate to have with us the first black female uh, senator for the state of Tennessee, Senator Thelma Harper, representing the 19th Senatorial District here in Tennessee. And uh, Senator Harper, let me welcome you to the show and tell you how delighted we are that you could come by and to be with us at this particular time. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be with you, Dr. Haney and to share ideas with you about from a different perspective. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Harper, uh, I would imagine that uh, our audience is more concerned about uh, how you became uh, a senator uh, more than some of the issues that we're going to talk about. As a matter of fact, I think uh, you are more of an issue, really, than the <laughs> uh, issues that we're talking about. Why don't you give us some information about uh, your involvement in politics and sort of trace it on out for us so that it might encourage some of those uh, who might be interested in doing and duplicating uh, your success, if that's possible. Thank you, Dr. Haney. I, I think, first off, let me say that I didn't get where I am alone. I, I've had some very good help. But early on in life, I, I determined that uh, there was a need to get involved. There's a need for community involvement. And there were so many things that happened around us and in our community that we were just totally unaware of. I started out by working in others' campaign. I've worked in presidential elections, senatorial national uh, elections, and local elections. I was first elected to office, uh, the first office I ran for was 1976 for the Constitutional Convention did relatively well. Then I ran for a uh, committee woman, Democratic Executive Committee woman, and was successful on two occasions. From there, I determined that there was a, a different need, there was a knowing that told me I needed to be more involved in, in decision-making process. With that, I ran for a councilwoman back in 1983, and I was successful. That provided me an opportunity to get our community involved in the decision-making process. That has been that your school children, your grandparents, those who are high school age, they are all involved in what happens when there's an issue in the council that af directly affected our community. We were there, and, and I think part of the decision-making is that we not make decisions in and of ourselves as elected officials we must ask our constituency what their desires are. They cannot give us adequate information unless we provide them what the, the, what the issues really are. I've had very good involvement from my constituency. From there, I, I ran the second time, and that provided opportunity to deal with issues such as landfills, uh, barking dogs, uh, just many other things that have, have affected this community. Uh, will the price of water go up? You know, well, the price of electricity that as a council member you have no direct decision making on. But those are the kind of issues that our community has been concerned about. Will there be additional school buses? Will our streets be paved? Will there be city lights? What are we going to do about education? All those are decisions that we've asked the community to give us input on. And many of them have. We've had some tough decisions to make. And I think you know that the landfill issue is one that has brought all of us into the forefront, the entire community of Nashville. With that involvement, I think you know that Senator Williams has served us eloquently for the last 22 years. When Senator Williams determined that he was not going to seek office again, it was not my first thought about running for state senator. I had thought about it several years and had watched him, and I think he did a, a very capable job. I decided I thought I could be a policymaker on a state level. With that, I shared it with friends and constituents. They encouraged me, promised that they would help, and they did. It meant campaigning. It meant an outlandish expenditure of money because we're talking about representing, oh, in excess of 160,000 people. So we ran for office successfully, and now we're there. And I want you to know that we've carried the community with us. We have a program where we've invited our constituents to come up and man the office for us, to answer the telephone, talk to other constituents about what their concerns are, and to know what it's like to be on Capitol Hill. That has been successful. We've got retired teachers, uh, just retired workers, parents who don't work, young people, school-aged children who come to the office. They answer the telephone. They sit at the desk. 
Many of them go in and serve as a page for a day, and we intend to continue this. We are planning programs to go into different areas of a community to learn what they would like to see. The other issue I think that is rather crucial right now, that is that the governor has offered some proposals and our telephone has just been ringing off. We must first of all avail ourselves of the information, try to digest it, and then come to some decision-making process. I'd like the community, and I've invited the community to, to share with me what their thoughts are after we get an understanding of it. I think initially the community said no, and that may be the answer. I don't have the answer.